Manchester United have just lost 3-0 to Sevilla away from home to lose 5-2 on aggregate. Who saw that coming? Seriously, who saw that coming? If you predicted a 3-0 defeat on the day and a 5-2 defeat on aggregate against one of the worst Sevilla teams of the last decade, then you need to tell me and tell all of us next week's winning lottery numbers. But jokes aside, United seem to struggle every time we have a big game away from home because we look like a Sunday league team at Anfield and lost 7-0. We got absolutely dominated 2-0 at St. James's Park after beating the same team 2-0 in the League Cup final and we got embarrassed 3-0 in Sevilla today. Look, I watched the same game that you guys did and I saw the same negatives that you guys did but overall, believe it or not, I'm taking some big positives from this game. So stay tuned till the end if you want to feel a little bit better about today. But to kick things off, let's talk about Ten Hag's tactics and how Sevilla got the best of us on the day. As always, please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy. And don't forget to turn on all notifications to never miss out on content just like this. This game was always going to be about how we started. We all saw how packed the Sevilla Stadium was, how the crowd and the opposition were all up for it from the starting whistle. And like any coach worth their salt would tell you, it's your job to silence the crowd in the first 15-20 minutes. You do that either by scoring a goal or by being solid defensively and denying Sevilla any room in the final third. And guess what? United failed to do either of those things and it all went south when En Nasiri got that goal in the 8th minute of the game. So let's talk about the tactics leading up to that specific play. So United were playing in a 2-4-1-3 or a 2-3-2-3 in possession with Martial, Anthony and Sancho up top. Sabitzer playing almost as the second striker as we've seen in the last few games right behind Martial and we had Eriksen playing almost as an 8 in the inside space on the left hand side. Behind them we had Casemiro playing as the lone CDM with Dalo and Manbisaka inverting into the inside spaces next to Casemiro. Now occasionally you had Eriksen dropping back next to Casemiro to make this a 2 4 one 3 but most of the time Eriksen was playing a bit further forward. Now Sevilla had a very clear game plan from the start. Put pressure on the United backline for the first 10 to 15 minutes because they are prone to making mistakes. And I've been saying this all season to teams that are worse than us who come to play us in big games. Just come and press us in the first 20 minutes because we tend to panic under any pressure. And that's exactly what United did today. We panic. Sevilla had En Nasiri, Rakitic, Ocampos and Lamela all pressing in packs of three. So basically En Nasiri and Rakitic would shift over to the ball side and work along with the winger to press the ball carrier and also cut off the passing options by marking the two closest players next to the ball carrier. And we have a clip here from kickoff to show you Sevilla's game plan. So we start with Sabitzer kicking off the game and by passing it back to Casemiro. As Casemiro receives the ball and lays it off to Eriksen, notice how En Nasiri is moving towards the ball carrier, which is Casemiro in this case. And the other three players are moving to cover the passing options around Casemiro and Eriksen. So Casemiro plays it back to Lindelof and again, En Nasiri moves to press the ball carrier while the three behind him are covering the passing options. But crucially for United, notice how Eriksen is stepping into this space over here to get behind the first line of Sevilla's press. And this isn't a bad thing at all. In fact, this is how you beat the press from passing out from the back. You allow the opposition to come onto you and then you play the pass into the spaces that they've just vacated. I have a huge issue with how Eriksen was deployed in this game, but we'll talk about that after this clip. So as Lindelof receives it, we see Sevilla are maintaining their press with En Nasiri getting tight to him and the other three marking the passing options again. As Lindelof plays it out to Maguire, we see Lamela sprinting towards Slabhead to put pressure on him. And here, the passing lane to Lindelof and Casemiro is blocked by these three Sevilla players that we see here. So the only real option for Slabhead is to play it out to Wan Bissaka. As Wan Bissaka receives it, for the fourth time in the space of 10 seconds that we've just seen here, we're seeing one Sevilla player pressing the ball carrier while two or three others are covering the passing options. So my immediate question is, where the hell is my additional passing option for Wan Bissaka? Why is no United player come short into this space to offer Wan Bissaka a pass? It should either be Anthony from the wing, it could be Sabitzer from the 10, it could even be Eriksen from the 8 roll on the other side of the pitch. 
So wan is forced to turn inside to look for Maguire because there's nobody to pass it to ahead of him. And he plays it into Maguire into this area here and Maguire is forced to clear it out. Again, had there been someone in this area here, wan plays it out to him and we completely get past the Sevilla press. But we're forced to play it backwards and we're forced to kick it long. So what's the point of playing out from the back? Anyways, let's get back to our tactics board now to talk about my issue with Ten Hag's midfield tactics today. So Eric Ten Hag played a midfield three of Sabitzer, Eriksen, and Casemiro, mainly because he was forced to leave Bruno out due to suspension. By this point, you guys should know that Bruno is United's most important player, because I've been screaming about this for months now. And for those of you that still don't believe me, I mean, this game was another example of how important Bruno is to this team, because we just were clueless in possession. But anyways, on paper, we probably still agree that this is Ten Hag's best midfield if Bruno is missing because we don't really rate Fred or McTominay ahead of the three that played today. But games are not played on paper, and this is not FIFA. Ten Hag made a huge mistake by playing Sabitzer in the team today over here, and he made an even bigger mistake by playing Eriksen as an eight instead of a deep lying playmaker. We've talked about this almost a million times on this channel. Ten Hag's preferred shape when we have all our players fit is the 3-3-1-3. In that shape, Eriksen drops between the center backs and plays as the deep lying playmaker either through the middle or as the left center back. Today, Eriksen played as more of an eight or a 10 in midfield and occasionally he was dropping next to Casemiro, but I don't think he ever got as deep as Lindelof or Maguire and we really struggled to beat the press as a result. Someone explained to me why our best technical player the guy who has the most composure on the ball is sitting ahead of the ball and watching as we make mistake after mistake after mistake when trying to play out from the back. And Sabitzer just really couldn't get into the game today because we didn't have a creator like Bruno who could feed him the ball in the final third when he was playing as the de facto striker. We've talked about his game several times now as well. His strengths are making off the ball runs to make space for players around him and finishing off chances from inside or just outside the box. Well, for both of his strengths to come out on the pitch, we need someone like a Bruno to find the open players when he makes those runs to drag defenders away from Martial, Anthony, and Sancho, and also to find him when the other players have made runs and he's in a position to shoot. So without Bruno in the team, Sabitzer just looked completely clueless and he kept giving the ball away in the final third. This was very much a game for Fred to start over Sabitzer and for Eriksen to play in the deep lying playmaker role. So Ten Hag got his midfield tactics spectacularly wrong today, which has cost us a shot at the Europa League trophy this season. Look, there's a long, long list of negatives to take away from that performance. Ten Hag got his midfield tactics wrong, De Gea had a howler, and maybe this performance makes Ten Hag think about getting a new goalkeeper for next season. Sabitzer and Eriksen had poor games, while Sancho looked like his usual useless self, and Martial got injured for the 50th time this season. But what if I told you that for every negative that I just listed, there is a huge positive that will put this season into perspective, because there are a lot of positives. First positive from this game, Anthony probably had one of his best games in a United shirt today. I said it after the game against Forrest, Anthony is key for United till the end of the season because huge first team players have picked up injuries at the worst possible time and we need him to step up to the plate. And Anthony showed me fight, desire and passion on the pitch today that I didn't see from anyone else in a United shirt. He created four chances, had one dribble, three out of three accurate crosses and three out of three accurate long balls. And best of all, he won three of the three tackles that he attempted and six out of his 10 ground duels. In the 16th minute when Sevilla were pressing the life out of United, he dribbles the ball from the halfway line all the way to the touchline and actually gets us a corner. In the 48th minute, Ocampos puts in a cross from this area over here right across De Gea and Anthony gets in there to clear the ball out for a corner. Anthony is coming into form at a crucial time in the season and he could be a match winner for us in some big games. Second positive from this game. Rashford and Shaw are back from injury sooner than expected. At a time when key first team players were dropping like flies, these two guys have come back from injury sooner than expected. And while I'm slightly worried to see Luke Shaw hobbling towards the end there, I'm gonna assume it's nothing. Let's hope they can regain some match fitness over the next couple of games and start performing like they were before they got their injuries. Third positive for this game. Despite this horrible, horrible performance and the disappointment of going out of the Europa League, 
we now have three fewer games to play till the end of the season, which is the two semifinals and the finals if we got there. I don't know if this has dawned on you guys yet, but this squad was never deep enough to play in all four competitions. It was never good enough to play and win games Thursday, Sunday, every week. And having three fewer games to play till the end of the season will mean we have a bit more breathing room to play our Premier League games and potentially a better shot at finishing in the top four. And the fourth and perhaps my most important positive takeaway is that Ten Hag has exceeded expectations this season. Look at how disappointed we are at losing to Sevilla in the fashion that we did today. The biggest reason that this loss hurts is that we expected the team to win this game. And we expected this team to get to the final and win the trophy. When was the last time we actually expected this United team to win three trophies and get into the top four? Can it, please tell me in the comments below. Every time we've lost a big game this season, like the 3-2 to Arsenal away from home, or the 7-0 to Liverpool at Anfield, or the 2-0 to Newcastle at St. James's Park, and the 3-0 today, we've been brought back to earth with a reminder that this team and these players are not good enough. Let's not forget that we're not even one full season removed from playing terrible football under Oli and Ralf Rangnick. And yet Ten Hag has done so well in his first season that we're expecting that same team to go and win three trophies and get into the top four. Look, I'm not saying you're wrong as a fan to expect all of this, but we have to admit that we were being delusional when we were expecting three trophies and top four. I mean, the fact that some United fans and some rival fans are even questioning Ten Hag's managerial credentials because of some of the losses that we've had just goes to show you how well he's done in just 10 months in charge of the club. Look, at the start of the season, my only expectation was playing a better brand of football and I would have backed Ten Hag if we played better football and finished 6th or 7th or 8th. But he's already won a trophy for us and looks like we're going to finish in the top 4. What more do you want from the guy? Give him a proper squad in the summer and watch how he wins more trophies next season and potentially a league title two seasons from now. As a bonus for you guys that are still watching, I definitely expect us to get spanked by Brighton at the weekend, but you never know. Maybe this was the kick up the backside that we needed to play well in the semifinal, and Maguire is suspended for that game, so that's already 1-0 to United. Also, the blame for that first goal, right? Let's talk about that. I think both De Gea and Maguire are to blame for that. De Gea because he should have passed it to Juan Bissaka, who was a bit more open than Maguire was, and Maguire for not scanning the field before asking for the pass, then for asking it without knowing what's around him, and finally trying to pass it to Juan Bissaka, at which point he already knows he's surrounded by at least one or two players. So yeah, you can guess who I blame more for that first goal. Anyways, we move on to the FA Cup semifinal at the weekend against Brighton. Come say hi as I'll be doing a watch along for that game. Thank you guys for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.